Well, thank you. And now, Portland, we better get things ready for our guest. Who's coming tonight? Uh, Peter Lowry. Peter Lowry? I'll see you later. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come back here, Portland. What are you running for? Well, in the movies, Mr. Lowry's always killing people. I'm frightened. Look, who is Peter Lowry? Annie Lowry's brother. <laughs> What is there to be afraid of? Come in. Has Mr. Laurie appeared yet? Uh, no, sir. Oh, good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, any knives, daggers, stilettos, dirks, or other cutlery found sticking in people's backs after Mr. Laurie leaves tonight must be wiped off and returned to the Keen Cut Cutlery Company at once. <laughs> These utensils have merely been loaned to Mr. Laurie. Remember, just because it's in you, it doesn't mean it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> that guy sounds like the Shadow's brother-in-law. Mr. Allen, I'm trembling. You're trembling. I'm shaking like a crapshooter's cuticle, Portland. <laughs> but we have got to be brave. Pardon me, is this Fred Allen's program? Yes. Uh, what do you want, little boy? Are you from the... <laughs> Are you from the Western Union? I'm Peter Lorry. Peter Lorry? <laughs> So you are Peter Lorry. Well, Portland, Mr. Lorry isn't anything like we expected, is it? No, he's smaller than Mayor LaGuardia. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. But you sure, you sure, you sure are a letdown, Peter. Do I disappoint you, Fred? Yes, I thought you'd come creeping in here on all fours, drooling arsenic with a buzzard on a leash. <laughs> You're supposed to be a brutal killer. You couldn't take a kumquat away from a Chinese baby. <laughs> That's what I keep telling them down at the morgue. You spend a lot of time at the morgue? Well, it's so nice and cool and peaceful at the morgue. Well, I, uh... I wouldn't know, Mr. Lorry. <laughs> Well, if it wasn't for me, a lot of people wouldn't know about the morgue. <laughs> now, please, quit talking about the morgue. You sound as though you're slab happy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so nice and cool and... I, I and know. Peaceful. I know you said that. You said that. You are an odious little runt, aren't you? <laughs> Fred... Well, why do people think I'm such a monster? I'm just a lovable little guy trying to get ahead. Ahead, I know. <laughs> and you're not getting mine if it's any more. You know, if people knew the story of my life, they'd see that I'm not a mad, twisted creature. They'd feel sorry for me. But you're so untall, Peter. You must have grown up with a weight on your mind. I did, Fred. I did. When I was two years old, I was an orphan. No father, no mother. Oh, you poor kid. What happened to your father and mother? Uh, oh, oh, I strangled them with a yo-yo. <laughs> oh, you unfortunate child. Who, uh, who brought you up? Oh, an uncle took me in. Good. But my uncle had three heads. Three heads your yes, uncle had. One of the heads... Took a violent dislike to me. The other two heads were friendly, were they? Yes, very friendly. But one night his big head ordered me out of the house. I left. Why that dirty head picking on a poor top like you? Where did you go, Peter? Two nights I would climb a big oak tree and sleep in a vulture's nest. You slept with vultures? Well, it was a large nest. There was plenty of room. Oh, you weren't cramped in the... No. Well, tell me, how did you how did you live? <laughs> For a while, I worked for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Really? Doing what? Well, when Dr. Jekyll was turning to Mr. Hyde, <laughs> I had to remind him to put his money in his other pants. <laughs> he had two pairs, lucky chap. <laughs> well, your lean days are over, Peter. Now that you're a big success in pictures, you must have many friends in Hollywood. No, no, Fred. I just hang around with boys, Carl of them, Bela Lugos, and Dracula. Well, what do you what do you boys do for excitement? Oh, every day we give bluff to the Red Cross. 
Well, doesn't uh, doesn't giving blood every day weaken you? Oh, it is now a blood. <laughs> I'm sure that now that you've opened your heart, people will understand you. Oh, I hope so, Fred. I, and I want to thank you for letting me tell my side of the story. From now on, the public will know that you weren't always a master of mayhem. 